On behalf of the Louisiana Center for the Book in the State Library of Louisiana, thank you for joining us for this virtual 2021 Louisiana Book Festival presentation. This program is a conversation between Louisiana Poet Laureates Mona Lisa Saloy and John Warner Smith. Dr. Mona Lisa Saloy is an author, folklorist, educator, and scholar of Creole culture in articles, documentaries, and poems about Black New Orleans before and after Katrina, and is currently Conrad N. Hilton Endowed Professor of English at Dillard University and Louisiana Poet Laureate. Her first book, Red Beans and Rice Lee Yours, won the T.S. Eliot Prize and the Penn Oakland Josephine Miles Award. Her second, Second Line Home, celebrates New Orleans' black Creole culture. John Warner Smith earned his MFA at the University of New Orleans. He has published five collections of poetry. His most recent, Our Shut Eyes, was published in the spring of 2021 by Mad Hat Press. A Kavi Kanem Fellow, Smith received the 2019 Linda Hodge Bromberg Poetry Award and, in 2020, he was awarded a $50,000 fellowship by the Academy of American Poets. Ladies and gentlemen, Mona Lisa Saloy and John Warner Smith. Mona Lisa, good afternoon. Uh, listen, I just want to start by uh, again congratulating you on this great honor. Uh, Louisiana is in for a great treat uh, of your service as a uh, Port Laureate, and uh, I'm here to support you in any way I can, but uh, I, I just, you know that it's it's going to be a ride. Uh, uh, you're going to get all over the state of Louisiana, you're going to travel, you're going to get in front of people in all kinds of places and just wow them uh, <laughs> with, uh, <laughs> with uh, your poetry. And, uh, uh, and I've often said, you know, that I... Uh, I actually got more out of that experience than, than I gave. And I think you find that to be true uh, as you begin uh, moving around the state, uh, bringing poetry to Louisiana. So again, congratulations. And I'm, again, just looking forward to your service. Thank you so much. And heartfelt congratulations to you, John, my poet laureate. <laughs> I was so happy for you. Not only are you a wonderful poet and ambassador for Louisiana, but you're the first brother to hold the post. <laughs> yeah. What an honor. Thank and you. your work is so profound and so Thank moving. So I was very proud of you for your tenure. And But I, I want to know more. Okay. What was the greatest challenge for you? Because first of all, you started and you had a wonderful first year and then yes, yes. COVID. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. It started out, you know, uh, really on the f a fast track. Uh, I had actually before my inaugural reading, I did a reading. Um, I think about a month before uh, in Lake Charles at my alma mater at Magnese, and so, and I hadn't, you know, it was my appointment was announced, but I hadn't done my my inaugural reading. But that event had been scheduled long before my appointment. Uh, and, and it seems like every couple of weeks from that point on, you know, I was out there in front of some, some audience. And I, I think the inaugural reading was in October of 19 uh, at the LEH office in New Orleans. Um, and then in November, I did a couple there. And, um, you know, one of my most memorable readings uh, was, uh, I, I want to say around the middle of November of 19, maybe, 19th or something like that in New Iberia, Louisiana, in uh, the Iberia uh, African American Historical Society asked me to uh, compose an original poem uh, for an event that they were holding <clears throat> to commemorate the 75th anniversary of the uh, 1944 uh, expulsion of, of Black uh, doctors and the NAACP in uh, in Iberia Parish, you know, and so uh, and that was challenging. I mean, it was it was fun, but I said, man, I I've got to write an original poem, you know, <laughs> commemorating this, and then show up to read it. Whoa! And, oh yeah, and it was uh, I think Daryl Bork had had done this before, um, 
uh, for another event that they had held. He had composed. I don't know if they've reached out to you about doing something. Not yet. They've got programming coming up, so they'll you hear from them, I'm sure. But that was, you know, such a, a blessing for me to to do that. And uh, uh, I showed up with the poem and read it. And then there was just it was actually a symposium that was held uh, for maybe several days of other events. And um, the day that I read was the commemorative event where there was an unveiling of a plaque. Uh, a marker, you know, uh, on the street in front of one of the buildings, I think that what one of these black doctors had owned and uh, it was just, just uplifting. And then I, yeah, I went on, I think December kind of slowed down a little bit because of the holidays, but, but I uh, got right back into the swing of things uh, at the turn of the year. I, I think uh, there was an event at Nichols that uh, was especially just excited to participate in in the latter part of um, of nineteen might have been in November also, but uh, big audience, big group, you know, and uh, and, and and I was doing little th groups too, you know. I mean, I'd go wherever I was asked to go, I went, you know, if I could, if I could get there. There was a group. Uh, if I, I want to say it was in uh, Ascension Parish in Donaldsonville, maybe. I think five or six people showed up and I had the greatest time <laughs> you know, they were in, 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 in poetry. Uh, but as you know, I th there might've been a couple in January, February, you know, Black History Month stuff. And, and I had uh, events scheduled March, April, May, June. And then of course the pandemic came in and just shut everything down. So starting from about March until now, it's been virtual. It's been all virtual. Um, so, you know, Mona Lisa, it was, and I'll say this much, the, the virtual work was, uh, I mean, it's not like being in person and, you know, holding a book in your hand and looking in the eyes of, of the audience. Um, but they were, um, for me personally, um, I, I, I mean, they, they were enjoyable. I really, I enjoyed every virtual presentation. I didn't see it as a, as a, as a stumbling block. I, I didn't see it as a barrier. I mean, you, again, you, you're not there. You're not looking at the reaction of responding to, uh, you know, the eye contact and the, the body language of, uh, of folks. And in some cases it, it was probably not a bad thing <laughs> that you were that you, that you were there. You know, you were you weren't seeing people turn their heads away from you. But uh, <laughs> but I did a lot of them. I don't know. I didn't keep. I, I documented every one of them. In fact, you'd be doing that with the LEH, uh, and you, you would have to document all of uh, all of the readings you do uh, and file a report uh, of, of of those where they took place. You know who was there, who sponsored, and all of that. You know, but but uh, I, I I found that the, uh, the although it was different, uh, and I think you you find this as well that uh, th there's still it's still poetry. You know, I mean, when you pull that book in your hand and you and you're reading, it, it's still poetry. And there's an audience out there you can't see them, but somebody's tuning in. <laughs> you know, so uh, I. And as a result of it, actually, to be honest with you, I think because of the virtual format, I was able to do more, you know, and I was, I was connecting with folks, not even in Louisiana. Uh, it was one group, I think the National Association of Poetry Therapy. Asked, I did a reading for the, with them and for them with uh, a couple of other poets. And then there was a follow-up workshop that I, I did with them. Uh, speaking of uh, using poetry to uh, kind of talk about uh, race, you know, and uh, uh, and I don't know where they they're, they're based, really, to be honest with you, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they're not in Louisiana, somewhere in the Northeast, I guess. So you'll, you, you'll have those opportunities as well. Uh, people will reach out to you uh, who are not in the state, but because you are the state poet laureate, you know, you're Dr. Mona Lisa Saloy. They're going to want you there, right? 
Uh, and so th th there were those opportunities and they were, that presented themselves uh, that, that I, I wouldn't have been able to do w without the virtual format. You know, mm. so it worked out pretty good. And, and of course, uh, not, not having to travel as often <laughs> is a benefit as, as well. So they're, they're kind of offsetting uh, issues there for you, but, uh, uh, and, and you'll, you find, I think you, you, you probably still do some traveling. I, I don't know. Uh, there'll be some opportunities. I, I got a request. Um, actually, it's an old request that we kept pushing back uh, from um, a gallery in Baton Rouge. And I, it's, it was scheduled to be, uh, I think this month sometime, we pushed it to October and now I think it's gonna be November. And they said that there'll be, it'll be in person, but you know, they'll have all the protocols in place, uh, the distancing and, and mask wearing and all that. Cause I was concerned about that. It says, you know, I don't, don't want to go into a crowded room, you know, mm -hmm. uh, just to read a poem to, <laughs> you know. So uh, there, the, there may be some uh, opportunities such where you, where there's a smaller group, you know, and yeah, where you could walk in the room and do that. Uh, I don't know, it, it, it'll it depend upon the audience, uh, the sponsoring organization and how they want to do it, you know. But anyway, it was, yeah, it, it was all positive. At the end of the day, at the end of the day I, yeah, I, uh, I, I keep saying this. I mean, I, I, met, I met people, uh, I went places uh, and was able to read in front of people and just interact and get to know people whom I would not have known or met probably without this experience, you know, and establish some, even some, um, some great relationships that I think are going to be endearing over time, all because of, you know, I got lucky, <laughs> you know, <laughs> with the poor, the poor laureate of Louisiana, so. Well, you earned it. <laughs> yeah, and, and look, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, wait, another question. Mm -hmm. Well, I was curious, was there a demand or an interest for workshops versus readings or more reading? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. How did that yes, go? Yes, yeah. Um, I did, I did, you know, the, the workshop with the National Association of Poetry Therapy was probably the first one I did. But then um, the uh, schools, you'll, you'll get some probably invitations from schools to do some workshops with, uh, with students. And there's nothing like that. I mean, that's just, you know, I did, I did, um, did a workshop uh, with the students of St. Landry Parish uh, that was sponsored by the Festival of Words, you know, and uh, it was online, you know, uh, but uh, I set it up where, uh, you know, I had I sent the poems to, uh, to the students ahead of time and we read poems. And, and then I had them to actually do some writing there in that session. Mm. And what brought me to tears, really, literally, was to hear those students read my poems, right? Oh. <laughs> that was just, that, that caught me on guard, right? Oh. They, they came on and uh, uh, yeah, uh, that, that was just uh, was personally, you know, just very moving for me to hear. Mm here and, and to see you know these high school students read my poetry and uh, and talk about it and I did a, I did another workshop with um, Lagrange High School in Lake Charles I'm from Lake Charles but Lagrange was like our you know cross town rival you know <laughs> at the time I didn't want to have much to do with Lagrange right but uh, so now this and that workshop was um, was interesting. It was unique in the sense that uh, it was all day. Uh, there were about six classes, or two English classes, and six groups of students. Wow. Uh, and so I just I sat at, at my computer all day. I think we took up maybe a, a forty five minute break around a lunch hour or something. Wow! They were just rolling in, and uh, and it was a similar format where uh, I sent them some poems and we talked about the poems and then I had them to compose poems. And, and um, we ended up with it because there were so many students that passed through the workshop, 
during the day, over the course of the day, uh, I want to say we ended up with about 60 plus poems. And, wow. uh, and the, the goal is to create a chat book for them. They, I have the poems. I've got to do some work on my end to, to read and, and edit. But uh, so they'll end up with a product of their poems, you know, edited by the former poet Laurie of Louisiana. So yeah, you're going to oh, get. Oh, I uh, love it. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and and again, it's uh, not being in the classroom. Uh, I don't think it. it um, I don't think it made much of a difference. I mean, because they were. I mean, the, the students were there. They were participating. We we had pretty good. Uh, uh, at least uh, in the case of Lagrange, it was a little challenging, you know, make, getting the audio right because they were sitting in the classroom, right, and not in front of a computer. It was just the, the screen out there in front of them, you know. But it worked out, you know. Uh, but yeah, the, the workshops will come. I didn't do. Um, I think I, other than the National Association of Poetry Therapy, I didn't do other uh, workshops with, you know poetry organizations or, or, or adults, but I would in a heartbeat, you know, say yes to any group of students, mm -hmm. if I were you, you know, and just go in there and, 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 uh, and hear what they have to say and just give them whatever you've got. You've got a lot to give, oh, <laughs> you know, you. and as a teacher, I know, you know, that, that that'll be as a, an English teacher, professor, uh, uh, even more gratifying for them, you know, to, to have you come in and, and give them that. So you're going to get those requests, I'm sure. Down okay, the road. I hope so. I hope so. Another question. Okay, I'm sorry to pick your brain, but because of COVID, we haven't gotten together. Yeah, so yeah, this is yeah, perfect. Yeah. Okay, another thing. When you began as our poet laureate of the state of Louisiana, did was there something you wanted to achieve, say a theme well, or something you wanted to occur? I I'm actually, not sure. yeah, I, um, I I couldn't do that. Uh, I tried, but but the hmm. the workshops, you know, I'll explain it. But the workshops uh, with St. Landry Parish and and Lagrange High School made up for it. But um, I, I I actually w wanted to work more closely with. Uh, the Delta parishes, uh, the rural parts of the hmm. state. Uh, but COVID just wouldn't enable that to happen. Um, I reached out and it was actually, it was part of, uh, I, I put that project uh, in, the, in my application for the uh, Academy of American Poets uh, Fellowship uh, that I received. And yes, project, congratulations on that. The, the project was to do, um, one workshop at four high schools in you know four school districts uh, in the northeast part of state and um, uh, you know they were struggling at the time with uh, just trying to figure out how they were going to come back to school this was in the fall of of, uh, of 2020 that I was planning to do that I was getting you know I mean it was it was challenging trying to find the right person to talk to. The principal, of course, was always busy. And, uh, and when I, I did get a schedule, I, I worked it out. Uh, I, by the end of the year, I was able to connect with at least an English teacher or someone in the, each of those schools to do that. But again, they were just still struggling with uh, how to go to school. You know? mm. um, uh, and I had to, I had to move on with my project. And, uh, and mm. actually, St. Landry and Lagrange reached out to me, so it worked out great, you know. But uh, I, at some point, uh, perhaps when COVID does, if when, not if, but when we kind of get back to some sense of normalcy, uh, I would, I would still like to, to do that, you know, as a former uh, poet laureate, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, because. Um, you know, my experience as a, uh, an education policy advocate for many years kind of taught me, I, uh, as I learned many of the challenges that students, families, children of those communities face educationally, economically, you know, 
And, and I know it would have been uh, uh, probably a good experience for them, uh, for me to, to be there and share my work with, with them. Uh, and so I, I still want to do that. Uh, I'm committed to at some point, uh, you know, when they're able to maybe host me, uh, uh, bring me in uh, to one of those parishes. I, I think I'd selected Morehouse, Tinsaw, Madison, um, uh, maybe Caddo was in there. I don't know, but they were, you know, rural school schools. Uh, were Caddo, well, I don't think Caddo was in it, but those other three were definitely rural and big schools, but in rural settings. And you, you can imagine the probably challenges they were having, even with connectivity, internet, and all of that, and trying to teach online. Uh, it, you know, it's just challenging for them. They probably still face some, some challenges like that. So yeah, that was that's what I wanted to do. Uh, but uh, I, I, at the end of the day, it was I got a good experience with uh, with those other students. Yeah, and I would I, I would encourage you to look at the academy's pro program. Uh, academy. I will. I will. Yeah, yeah they. Yeah, in, the day the day I don't think it opens again until the fall. Tell the fall, yeah. Yeah, it ended in January. I did oh, check. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I yeah, did check. Yeah. And, that's, uh, a, that's a beautiful gift. I mean. It is, it is. And um, and I did, was able to report when I did report to them that I got something done. It wasn't exactly what I wanted to do. They were, they were sure. quite, quite pleased with that. So. Uh, that's great. Uh, yeah, I'm curious to know what you might have in mind yourself. Um, okay, I came up with a theme. Okay. Louisiana culture's loving words. Culture's and culture. to use that in kind of a four prong, mm, okay. ambitious one. Yeah, yeah. But one of the things that the pandemic has done, we've lost a lot of the little cafes. We've lost the spoken word events. Mm. So there are a lot of poets who are not in the academy like you and I, meaning higher education. Yeah. And so I thought how, what, how wonderful it would be to give the teachers a break. Mm -hmm. Give poets a little money and put them into the classroom around the state yes. and maybe have a group of poets that would go in the north part of the state and a group of poets that would cover the south, even if it was only a half a dozen schools. Yeah. So I'm yeah. going to pick your brain and plug you well, in. I can that tell you, that's a great idea. And, and uh, you know, um, you'll find the doors, of, I think, will swing wide open for that. I, I think okay, I'm hoping I, so. Yeah, it yeah. means it leave. means getting yeah. funding. It means yeah, yeah. because I want the poets to be paid. Yes, right. And but, you know what, Mona Lisa, I I honestly think uh, you you'll find poets like me who'll just say, yeah, yeah, me too. I don't need to be paid. I don't need. Yeah, me too. But I have a day job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and well, some yeah, of the poets yeah, yeah. don't. Some of the poets don't. But even yeah. those, even poets, I know. There's a, there's a poet uh, I introduced you to, Miro Guillory, um, yes. earlier this week, you know, who uh, uh, is, a, is extremely exceptionally talented writer and is very committed to doing that kind of work in Calcasieu Parish. He's done it, actually, uh, after I, uh, uh, he introduced me to, in fact, to the, uh, the, the, the teachers at Lagrange who were interested in, in since I did the workshop with the high school there, he's gone back to that school and done some work with the students. And uh, just, uh, you know, from his heart, you know, it's just something he wanted to do. And I, and I think you'll find poets, uh, you know, who, assuming they can fit it into the schedule, make it work some kind of way, who, who gladly do that, uh, you know, not expecting to be paid. I, you sure. Know, Count sure, me. But sure, but even as a I young know. poet, I had to make a living. Yeah, and yeah. So and so I yeah. learned, yeah. just as you suggested for those students, yeah. to produce something that I could sell. Yeah, yeah. And so I was learning publishing at the same time. So mm -hmm. for that poem, that project, I would like to see either poetry posters, That'd be great, broadsides, because yeah. that's mm -hmm. how we started mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. Black poets in America. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then a chapbook. Mm -hmm. of the best of the work, say, from the school. Yes. Oh, yeah. And then maybe one anthology of the best of all of them. 
Oh, yes. that maybe one of the local Thank presses you. would produce. Right. What a gift that would be to our libraries, oh, yeah. to the young people. Yeah. Right. And right. I think, and then of course, a celebratory reading. And, and for uh, all the students who participated. Yeah, that's something that we talked about doing also with the Lagrange uh, uh, students is, you know, when we can, you know, when we can. Yes. Probably yeah. have a program where the students can invite the parents and just. Yes. Student body and. Yes. And, and our young people need this. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, they love it. Oh, yeah. And, you know, Mona Lisa, I, I, um, I was so moved by the, um, I guess, the subjects, the things they, they expressed about themselves and their experiences. Um, be surprised. I mean, well, you know, they'll, they'll, they open up and poetry often gives young people that way, that opportunity, right? You know, they're struggling with a lot of issues, perhaps in school or family in general, but um, uh, and some, you know, have, um, you know, anxiety issues and, you know, there's just stuff going on, right? Mm -hmm. For example, the, the uh, I did the Lagrange uh, uh, event uh, after Laura had ravaged uh, that part of the state and Lake Charles in particular. And so a lot of those students had been displaced, you know, families, you know, properties completely destroyed. And, you know, you don't think about how it impacts young people as much as, you know, well, I lost my home, you know, I don't have a roof, I lost mm -hmm. my car, but, but emotional trauma of them having to go through that. And to, to hear them read poems about that was kind of just blew me away, you know? Mm. So I think, yeah, uh, I think poetry gives youth that sort of venue, that avenue, that, that genre where they can be just creative, you know? They don't have to, you know, worry about how it looks, how it really sounds, just, come in and express themselves, put it, put those words down on paper. That's a great project. But count me in, really. Uh, Yay, John. I, okay, so that's ready. one. That's I'm kind ready. of a four-prong one. Okay. The well, other thing one. is, <laughs> okay. yes, I want to develop a youth poet laureate oh, oh. for the state yeah. Yeah. and then encourage the major cities, yeah. Shreveport, Lake Charles, Baton Rouge, New Orleans, to do yeah. a city poet laureate eventually now. We're yeah. going to need some corporate funding for that. But I would like to see yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, a panel of those of us who are experienced okay. yeah. and, and have a submission process mm -hmm. and then pick. And let mm -hmm. me tell you, I've been cheating. I've been looking at how the nationals are doing this. Yeah. And so, and there's a young girl I will introduce you to eventually. She came to me and I said, oh, I'm working on this. And so mm -hmm. I'm going to work on this with her. Good. And Good. we want a panel to come up with a project to, mm -hmm. to submit to LEH, but try to get corporate funding. One, I want the winner to at least get a thousand dollar scholarship. Oh. And then we could have the, say the finalists become poetry ambassadors. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they might not get the cash, but they'll get the recognition. Oh, absolutely. And at the very least, we could do maybe some broadsides, a poetry poster of each one and have a reading and maybe yes. sell those to raise money. I yes. think some corporate sponsors would love to have their, their names on there. I don't know. I'm, I look this. I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming. Yeah. But well, I think it's really you, possible. You years. Yeah, you got two years to to get it, to pull it off, at least get it, get it started. Yes, know? to get it started. Get it started. So ultimately, to begin a state poet laureate to have a contest, our youth need the encouragement they, oh, yeah. for the creative arts to, because Louisiana culture's loving words mm -hmm. is to honor our ancestors, to celebrate our lives mm -hmm. and to create hope for tomorrow. That's what poetry does. Yeah. And yeah, I want I, to see I know that. There, there's some communities, I know Baton Rouge, especially, you know, having lived there for many years, mm. uh, has been very active in engaging youth in poetry, you know, poetry out loud programs, mm -hmm. and, uh, just, you know, having slams where young people come out and just, you know, recite their work. And uh, I don't know what's happening in other parts of the state, but I, I'm sure there's some of that going on. 
in many parts of the state. And so the talent is there. I think it's certainly the willingness is there. We can, we can get the funding. Yeah, that'd be yeah. a great project. And, and certainly New Orleans too. Yeah. And I would think like Lake Charles and Shreveport also would have a cadre of youth you, yeah, who might right. gravitate toward this. I Absolutely. think it would just be a wonderful thing. And let me tell you, many, many states are doing this. So we're not yeah. trailblazers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got some models out there. You can. Yeah, we have models. And so and that's what I've been checking out. And I think yeah, it's more yeah. doable than we realize. It's, yeah, I think it is. And um, you've got a poet laureate in, of Caddo and a poet laureate of Baton Rouge. Yes. Uh, I don't know of any other cities that have, you know, a poet I'm laureate. I'm not sure. But, but those folks can also be a part of that process and who are, you know, very, I guess, uh, connected in with the arts community in 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 those communities, mm -hmm. and who can help kind of uh, plan and facilitate uh, the, the the selection and pro or how, you know whatever process you would you know would you come up with, but and then and then even the hosting of of uh, uh, readings in the community, mm -hmm. yeah, that so. And and yeah, I would think other other cities. You you would focus on the major cities in cities Louisiana. To begin, yeah, yeah, just open it up statewide, some kind of way. Um, yeah. yeah, and I, then and then last but not least, but to offer. Now hold on. Workshops, a you workshop. Said were, you said there were four. I've only heard two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well the the first one has four parts. So. Oh, I see. Okay, but. Okay, and the second one, major one, is this. Okay. But to not just end with the contest and the poet, but to have the poetry come into the community, oh. not only through readings, but maybe poetry posters, maybe put them on the buses. Wouldn't mm -hmm. it be wonderful to be driving by and see a poet, a young poet's face in their poem mm -hmm. on the bus or something? Something that's doable, that doesn't take a fortune, yeah. but just to share and get it out there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. And isn't that... Uh, I mean, I think back on when I was uh, in junior high, high school. I mean, I I didn't get exposed to poetry. I mean, that kind of stuff. I, I might have had some I? information <laughs> inside of me, you know. But 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 it. Who knows? You know, if I had an opportunity like that um, at an early age, uh, I might have been able to write more books or whatever. I don't know. But but uh, it certainly would have given me just more of an, a well-rounded experience as an artist to be able to do that at, at, at that age. And there's, there's so much talent that is untapped uh, in young people who, are, who don't know that, they, that it's, in the, it's there, right? And uh, who, I mean, there's probably potential, uh, you know, English majors there, poets, writers, novelists, you know, short story writers who are going to come through that in a program like that, uh, but they'll get that exposure and that opportunity at a young age that will kind of help them figure it out that that's the direction they, they should be going down the road, you know. Uh, and to answer your question, the last two, <laughs> <laughs> to offer an adult community workshop. <clears throat> yeah. So that people who are not in the academy, not in higher education. Maybe they're teachers, maybe they're just postal workers or somebody driving a truck and maybe they write. Yeah. I met a brother a couple of weeks ago, he was picking up metal mm -hmm. that had fallen off of people's houses mm -hmm. and he knew Yiktov. I don't know if you remember Yiktov. No. Yiktov, he passed away, but he was from the neighborhood, spoken word poet. But mm -hmm. he came out with a chat book way back in the day no. before I was exposed. Really? And so he's probably a little older than me, but I love the idea of offering an adult workshop, number three, and a youth community workshop. So how would you do the, uh, would this be a uh, selected cities kind of thing? Or you, you deal I don't know. <laughs> These are my dreams. So no, I mean, I'm thinking, yeah. I'm open yeah, to ideas. Great dreams, you know. Uh, I, I, I asked that because... I mentioned that I'd gone to uh, Donaldsonville and was at, I think, Ascension Parish Library, maybe five or six people showed up. And what made that so, uh, for me, you know, so enriching and 
fulfilling for me was there was there a couple of people there, this one uh, young man in particular, who was just very enthusiastic about writing poetry. And we talked a little bit in a workshop, he'd be perfect for something like that, you know, mm. where they can come into a setting and just share work and, and workshop some poems and, you know, yes. learn, learn some, some stuff about poetry. Yeah. Um, and I, I was hoping you're thinking about it, uh, you know, try to reach smaller communities, you know. I love I mean, that idea. It, it, I love well, that. Know, uh, of course, logistics is going to be challenging for that, you know. But um, we, we, you know, we think about, you know, the bigger cities, the bigger communities. But right in those small communities, it's just packed with talent and powerful voices that uh, and young people and adults, you know, who are just very interested in, in, in getting it out. Festival of Words would be a, probably a yes. strong partner for something like that. They have done some things like that in the uh, mm -hmm. record <laughs> you know, with Patrice, you know, Patrice Miller. Yeah. Yeah, that that's great. That's sad. great. Man, so you, you be so in that's my floor. You, so you're going to do all this in four, in two years? Huh? I don't know. I'm going to try, John. <laughs> <laughs> and that's in addition to, to the your job. <laughs> this is the job, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. But that's my dream. I, yeah. oh. I, I, it might not be in a huge scale, but to begin yeah. and to, yeah. to revitalize a okay. love for poetry in the state yeah. and in all of our areas, as you say, even the rural areas, to, yeah. to get where yeah. people maybe bring not it. have as many venues. Yeah, bring it to them. Yeah, so uh -huh. give them and even And even now, because of COVID, even in the larger cities, businesses are having a hard time so this might be a way to welcome people back and you see things like that can be done virtually mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and so and that's in that sense you know virtual format would be really a benefit uh yeah. we can do workshops uh easily in the virtual yeah. format and get you know a bunch of people in, in you know it can be facilitated structured facilitated well you don't have to be, you know, in person. Yeah, so that would, yeah, that would be uh, easy to pull off logistically, I think, in that sense. It's of course, you know, a lot of planning has to go into it, but people are hungry for that. And I think so too. And they know that this, the, the Port Laureate of Louisiana is, ask, is you know, hosting a, a, a workshop in the community. Yeah, they will. Uh, and, and let me suggest this too, also, Mona Lisa. Okay. Libraries. Yes. Libraries, libraries. Um, I was hoping, you know, that I could do some more things with libraries, you know, um, but, you know, COVID kind of. Yeah. And it's understandable that they're closed because it is a closed space yeah. and they want people to be safe. Yeah. And right. my neighborhood, but, not yeah. everybody owns computers. We yeah. have Seventh Ward, there's 10,000 residents. Yeah. Right. When I go to the neighborhood library, there's the all the computers are in use. Yeah. Gentilly, but, all the computers are in loose. And well, so where are they now? What are they doing? Right. But you know, they do regular programming with the community um, libraries all over the state. And so that that may be a, a maybe a good source of partnership there. And uh -huh. it might could bring in um, some corporate sponsors more easily. Oh, know. interesting. Great idea, John. Great um, idea. Just, just a thought, but, uh, okay, okay, so my poet laureate, do I pass with my four ideas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I, you know, they're ambitious, but they're doable. <laughs> they're very, all very doable. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, I'm just, uh, I'm anxious to support uh, your work in any way I can. Just let me know. Thank you so much. I will plug you in. And especially thank you for the idea to reach out to yeah. the more rural areas. Mm -hmm. I certainly, I love to visit those places. Right. Hey, I want to know the whole state. And, and you know, love yeah, to visit. You, you're going to find too, uh, something I didn't mention, Mona Lisa, is um, that I got out of this, uh, you know, one of the, the things that I, I I got out of the experience that I was unexpected for me. It was I, I just didn't expect it was um, finding talent. Uh, well, they will find you. People are gonna people are gonna reach out to you. 
I mean, I, I sent you, I connected you with a couple of folks who's, man, do you, do you, do you know this, 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 po this new poet laureate? And I said, yeah, yeah, I saw them, you know, and, uh, and they, but, but they want, uh, they want you to know that they are writing and, uh, and, you know, they may want to send you a sample of your work if you can kind of fit that in your schedule. But I, I mean, that's how I met William Jefferson in, um, so in, interesting. in New Orleans. Yeah, you know, Jeff, as we call him, you know, search me out. Right? I, I, I opened up an email one day from uh, Southern University on SUBR email accounts. Was, William Jefferson, who's this guy, man? And it, you know, you're cautious about opening external mail, right? I opened it anyway and there. I said, William J. Jefferson, poet, right? Uh, I mean, got a lot of other lives he lived, but he's a poet. I mean, very talented guy. And, uh, and to discover his work uh, has just, for me, been a blessing. You're going to find that. You, there'll be some opportunities going to just present themselves. Other, and of course, the panel um, that you'll be sponsoring, both for the festival and National Poetry Month, are going to be some similar opportunities where, you know, where you, you can... You can mix your readings with both um, published poets, you know, and some maybe not so well published poets, emerging as we say, new new poets, uh, discovery that um, you you, you want to help bring to the world, you know, and uh, they are grateful for whatever support you give, but what they don't know is I've gotten more from them than I've given to them, you know? So you're gonna, that's gonna happen. You're gonna, they, they, they're, they're gonna search you out. And I would just encourage you to just, you know, be, it, when time permits, <laughs> be open to their voice uh, because you can be a, a, a think of, of some a great help to them uh, given your, the power of your voice and your experience as a published poet. They, People are going to look at you. I mean, you, you're our new poet laureate and you're the go-to person for poetry. And I'm an old guy now. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm former, you know, they, hey, they, they don't want to hear from me. They so want to hear from powerful. Lisa Saloy. Yes, Dr. Bless your heart. But on that note, okay, you have a new project and a new book. <laughs> so please tell us about it, the title, and yeah, um, something to us. I got a copy of it here. It's, uh, our Shut Eyes uh, was released in April of this year. Uh, the project, you know, had been um, finished a while back. The pandemic kind of slowed the publishing process down, but we finally got it out. It's my fifth collection. And um, uh, I'll tell you a story. It started out being, um, it's going to be uh, both uh, new and selected poems on race in America. And I've written a, a lot of poetry on that sort of theme. But, uh, and so I had a body of work um, um, on that theme of news poems. And I was going to just bring in some uh, poems from other selections and, and do it that way. And then um, it, it occurred to me at some, some time back in 2019 that we were approaching the 40th uh, anniversary of the Atlanta child murders. Uh, that started 1979 and um, 79 to 81. So, and um, so I, I thought about it. Well, you know, uh, that's an it's, a, it's an important uh, experience for America to never forget, right? Um, and um, I thought of maybe writing a couple of poems, and then it stretched on the to add to the to the new section, poem section. And then it's, it, the more I, I got into it, it ended up being half the book. So half the poems, I cut, I cut the selected poems out and, and made it pretty much uh, wow. all the new poems, you know, but half of the new poems are, are, are poems, it's all the, speaking on the experience of the Atlanta child murders. Um, mm -hmm. And we are now in the 40th, uh, anniversary, 40th year, and it's, it's, wow. it's, it's an experience that we should never forget. I know Atlanta will never forget it, but, no. uh, you know, that we, you, 
course, you remember it when it when it when it happened, and it, it was one of those experiences that if you were paying attention to news, uh, it and you were an African American parent in particular, it it really tugged at your heart that you know these twenty eight uh, so kids were being found were found dead, you know, mm -hmm. you know and in all kinds of places, you know, they came up missing first, then they would be found dead. Hmm. And then to think that um, uh, only two of those murders were actually solved. Hmm. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a man sitting in prison today <clears throat> who's tried and convicted for two of those murders and then the case, the other cases were closed. <clears throat> you know, so that's what the book is about pretty much, um, you know, um, I haven't done much reading from it though, since I read, obviously because of the pandemic. And uh, and now that I'm I'm a former poet laureate, I, I won't be doing much reading. <laughs> go, go, well, go, please go. grace us with a <laughs> poem. Yeah. yeah, I'll do one. I'll do one. And um, uh, are you going to do one yourself? I'm going to uh, do one. Okay, good. This one um, is uh, is a poem. This is. Um, from the section of the book uh, on the Atlanta child murders. And um, uh, just a little side note, this young man, Darren Glass, uh, was one of the victims of the, uh, uh, of the murders that took place there. And he, he was a foster child, Darren Glass. And Darren was in fact the only victim of the Atlanta child murders whose body was never found. So, um, you know, they, they found all the other bodies, but they got a foster child, body missing, never found 40 years, here we are. So I wanted Darren's voice to come alive. Uh, the title of the poem is titled, uh, Darren Glass. I am one of the innocents, slaughtered by a world that never heard stories we told and songs we sang. I know the rage of night, but you needn't wonder or worry. I am safe and strong, not a black boy shattered by the weight of hate. The one who became vapor in the twilight of day. I am sounds stirring cool spring air. The ones you can never name. I am a mist of blinding fog faces of clouds and the whir of birds soaring. I'm not a memory or phantom. I'm not flesh, bone, or dust. I am invisible, but real, like a bud in the garden of your children's dreams. I don't remember my mother and father how I became glass, but I know that I am Darren, broken yet whole. That's Darren Glass. Mm, powerful. Thank you. Thank powerful. You. Wonderful. I can't wait to read the whole thing and get my signed <laughs> copy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll, uh, I'm looking forward to your inaugural reading. Uh, I know I'll be. Uh, hearing some great poetry from you that night, but you're going to grace us with one, bless us with one here this afternoon as well, right? Thank you. I, this, this time has been such a challenge for everyone and I've been responding. So I now have a new collection oh. and I'm looking for a publisher. And by the oh. grace of God, I've had a couple of people approach me. So I, I just want to tighten it up. I want to take my time and because it's, it's all over the place. You. Publishers asking you, that's poof. <laughs> it's it's all over the place. So yeah, I, okay. I'm going to share one new piece okay. that tries to capture where my head has been about yeah. us right now. Okay. And it's more about our culture hmm. because that's what's most precious to me that, that in spite of everything, we still have such a lovely and resonant and resilient culture. Absolutely. And this is my offering okay. and is Black New Orleans for truth. For truth? For truth. 
For true. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's, that's how we say it. For that's true. Marvelous. That's marvelous. That's Black New Orleans. Orleans for true. <laughs> right. Black New Orleans for true. Come Mondays, some, some will never see us. Some will never understand. Only some will get us. Only some will dig our sound, our joy, our style, our hip reverb, our lingo, our tails, tall, squat, and old as the world. Will they see who or what she or he is? Our crime was being black, our salvation, faith, and African ancestry replete with exuberant arts, adaptable like lizards, we weren't supposed to survive whole. Black, sea, Black Creoles say, now you got the picture with the right pair of drawers on. <laughs> we call ourselves Creoles, Burrow, guardians of the Creole groove. Yes, yes. Now Creoles can't stay calm doing nothing. <clears throat> we make banjo, guitar, or piano solos, or will one potato, two potato at play, or salad with eggs to kiss your papa. Don't much bother folks who wake up to sweet smells of cane syrup laced with garlic pie that's pan fried shortening bread. Well, who makes the best oyster stew? Who shucks them fast, best? We be doing, we be doing, we be doing us, but we don't mind waiting to see the Lord now. In the meantime, we tell kids, there's ancestors in your veins. We call to the battlefield of life turn stumbling blocks to skipping stones, slip, slap, smile, or frown, stories turn our necks around, hold someone's good in mind, and be safest in someone's prayer. Now, that's between you and me and the gate post, you hear? That's between you and me and the gate post, you heard me? Golly. <laughs> Only I wish I I'm not, I'm not blowing smoke here. I wish I could write like that. <laughs> oh, you're so I'm kind. Serious. I'm serious. Hey, wow! I mean, the, the imagery, the, the the power of the sound, even you know. So, uh, the the uh, what's the title of that uh, collection? Have you titled it yet? Uh, yes, the working title is Black Creole Chronicles. Black Creole Chronicles. Yeah. Oh. And so I've got oh. pandemic stuff. I've got Black Lives Matter stuff. Oh yeah. I've yes. got We Me Too stuff. I've got Wait. it's it's all over the place, but a lot of cultural because the no, voices, yeah. the voices, yeah, yeah. the voices. Yeah, yeah. The voices I, I, I hear the there. voices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it must be. Uh, I mean, you're coming. You're, you're coming from a community. Yes. That is the most interesting place in not America, I think the world, you know, and, you know, the culture is what I think is what makes it so interesting and you know, the diversity and the mixture, but, you know, you, and you're, that's your focus there, you know, and, um, and, and that's a voice that's, I think America's waiting to hear. I think that book Thank is you so much. Be powerful. I can't promise me you want to read that one. Uh, <laughs> Uh -huh. reading. <laughs> okay, I will. Thank I you. Can't wait. I can't wait. Yeah. I can't Thank wait. you. I like to, I, I always hold on to what Amira Baraka said. We has it. We has it. <laughs> we has it. I read that in your bio. Uh, you, 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 you've done a lot of, I guess, research and work on the Black poets, Black beat mm -hmm, mm -hmm. poets. Yeah. And uh, they were Black arts movement. The era of the Black Lives Movement is one of my favorite as well. Of course, ah. you know, and Mary, you know, I had I had the pleasure of meeting him. Me you know, too. Years ago. And but I don't know about you, but I was just awestruck. I, I didn't know how to speak to uh, Mary. Uh, and he was so down to earth and regular, you know, he was a brother, a homeboy, you know, just homeboy just, through and through. He wanted to talk to anybody, right? But uh yeah, um, you know, to to keep continue that, I think that legacy is something we all need to kind of play a part in. You know, poets like like Mary, yeah. Uh, when, and how look long, at that. Your poems about your family are so. Yeah, well, but, I mean, uh, it's just powerful. Thank you. you. I, I think uh, you know the the black experience. Uh, um, 
is, you know, if we stay, I think, connected with who we are and where we came from uh, and, you know, where we see our family going, poetry like that comes easy, you know, it's when we, we kind of, you know, we lose touch with that, that, you know, we can't talk about it and write about it, you know, and I often think of what uh, Langston uh, preached, you know, in that, you know, famous essay, Negro Artists in the Racial Mountain, you know, yes. that we, we've we got to, you know, that, that's, that's the source of our beauty and yes. of our heart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, we just need to, just, we don't even have to tap it, it's there. We just kind of let it out, right? But it thank you so much. Me. Yeah. It inspires me every day. But what's, what's the date of the, uh, of your uh, inaugural program is is it September 29th huh? okay yeah September 29th and it's free and open email. to the public yeah people just need to sign up just, just okay. register at LEH they'll send you a zoom I, I remember I your say, I inaugural missed, reading I haven't missed that email that I <laughs> that they no no look I remember that. your inaugural reading I was so honored to be in that number Oh man! And a, to meet your family, it was so good. priceless. Yeah, that was a great night. It's a good and day. And then even to know somebody in your family, I think it was a friend of the family, a young woman, and she had either studied with me or spent some time with me at Dillard. Oh, and okay. She said, "You're here. You're here." And yeah, because <laughs> yes, I'm in this number. I'm here. <laughs> yeah, because she had gone to school with my daughter Joy. Okay. Uh, at at uh, at at Dillard, Joy eventually graduated from LSU, but but you know she she spent several years at, at Dillard, and that's where she enjoyed. And I uh, actually, uh, yeah, she was there. Um, that's Farron Clark's wife. I can't remember first name now, but uh, a professor at, at at Nichols, and they in they hosted. They ended up hosting me at Nichols okay. uh, a few weeks uh, later. But yeah, uh, so we had that Dillard connection, huh? Yes. <laughs> well, and it was Jericho, such a funny ask, thing. <laughs> Jericho Brown coming down? Is he going to come down? Are you going to twist his I, arm and invite I him? I hope least, so you know? at some point. <laughs> yeah, 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 that would be. I uh, hope so. It would be awesome uh, yes. to, for him to be present there. But uh, it's going to be a great night for you. Thank uh, you. I'm looking forward to it. I am so thrilled and honored oh. and I just I want to do my best. I I come after the great you, so uh, I I have to bring it, as we say in the neighborhood. <laughs> and I'm looking for an opportunity for us to be, other than the LEH thing, you know, to actually be uh, in the room together and reading some, doing some stuff together down the road. So I know that there'll be opportunities for that. I can't wait, you know. I'm looking forward to share this. With, to share the a little bit of my space and you, to be part of your space, you know? <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sure Sounds you, like yeah. a great time. Forward to it, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So um, I guess we'll be wrapping up then, huh? And, and uh, I just want to end it with, um, again, uh, to, to let you know, Mona Lisa, my, and again, my heartfelt congratulations to you. I was just uh, so excited when I, learned of your appointment and uh, Louisiana did the governor did the right thing the LEH and all the you know uh, members of the selection committee did the right thing and uh, you, you're going to be a blessing for all of us over the next two years and beyond so congrats thank you so very much thank you thank you I am honored again and thrilled and I too want to thank the Louisiana Endowment for the Humanities for everybody on all those committees that did the hard work, especially Dr. Olivia Pass, who nominated me and all that hard work she did to make this happen. God bless you, Liv. Yeah. And just all the people who wrote recommendations and mm. for me, it was quite a process. Thank you, thank you all. And John, again, we I, I was thrilled when you became Poet Laureate because you're such a wonderful poet and reader and you just exude creativity. And then as an educator too, I can only imagine the hearts and minds that you touch on a regular basis. So I'm honored to, to follow your good steps and your path of creativity in this position and to serve our beloved state. Right. It is right. truly my, my great honor. And last but not least, everybody stay safe, be well, 
spread the love and mass like it's Mardi Gras. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. All right. <laughs> Yeah, well, Thank you, Jim Davis, good. for that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a good line and a good way to part. Thanks again for the afternoon, the time spent with you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Absolutely precious. Thank you. Thank you for watching this presentation of the virtual 2021 Louisiana Book Festival. Please visit our official bookseller, Cavalier House Books, and receive 20% off all featured festival titles through the end of the year. A special thank you to our festival sponsors. The Louisiana Book Festival will return on October 29th, 2022.